Praise God. We had a great move of the Holy Ghost this morning. I just strong move of the Holy Ghost this morning, and it was a wonderful service, and I'm excited to see what God's going to do today in this place. Job chapter 33 and Acts chapter 12. If I can get a little bit more monitor, man, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm trashed up here. Job 33, 14 to 16, Acts 12, thank you, 5 through 9, praise God. Praise the Lord. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. I couldn't see my feet Thursday night. <laughs> Amen. Had to repent for gluttony. Job thirty three fourteen. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. Acts 12, 5 through 9. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keeper, the keepers before the door kept the prison. Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. The angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind on thy sandals, and so he did. He saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Verse 9, And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, You're not dreaming. Turn to someone else and tell them, you're not dreaming. The Lord gave me this message this week, and I preached it this morning, and I'm preaching it to this entire body here today. I feel it's a word from the Lord for this church. Lord Jesus, have your way in this place. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I worship you, and I praise you for what you've done and what you're about to do. Anoint me and anoint the people together also, we pray. Speak to us as only you can do, and then demonstrate your power in Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Isn't it a blessing to be able to clap your hands to the Lord Jesus Christ? We love you, Lord. Have your way today, God. We worship you in Jesus' name, and you may be seated. We are living in such a negative time negative culture negative society everything on the news is negative for the most part i told them this morning that if a hero saves a life and a zero takes a life the same night the zero will get the top spot on the news that just everyone wants to know about bad things that happen people are into negative things people expect things to go wrong to fall apart to get chaotic and to break down and you and i and are guilty probably of saying some of these statements that we hear from people in the world all the time that if it weren't for bad luck i'd have no luck at all and if it sounds too good to be true it probably is and no news is good news and if something's going good i must be dreaming for this actually to be happening that's the mentality of the world and that negative mentality even comes into the church people i told them this morning they they love stories about devils but they don't like stories about angels they'll they'll wit with you when you tell about a devil they'll criticize you if you say an angel showed up it's negative society that we live in faith messages that come out of the mouth of the preacher can be immediately aborted in the ears of people just a few feet away as soon as the words come out of their mouth because of a a, a, a feeling of 
doubt or unbelief or heaviness that they live in a situation outside the walls that was preaching to them all the way to church and so when the preacher starts talking about how God can do anything and God can save your family the other voice starts talking and says yeah that's not for you and, and you know how long you've waited and you've waited a long time and you messed up your miracle opportunity you'd be shocked at the people that have the Holy Ghost that live in condemnation people full of the fire of God supposedly but have other voices talking to them keeping them from worshiping and expecting God to do more because of the negative that they hear and so when they come to church the stuff they hear in the world comes back to them if it, it must it must not be true uh, it's too good to be true I must be dreaming for this message to really be to me I mean I can relate to it yeah yeah he's talking about my family but but I, it's really it really can't be to me because I've got too many things that are fighting this at home and it's been a long time and what a war we have in the middle of a pre message between the enemy and God as God is preaching and trying to give someone faith and the enemy's trying to arrest them saying sit still and don't grab that word like it's your word I dare you to grab the word today like it's your word I dare you to say my family's coming out of it and my my miracle will happen in my marriage and my child will pray through and I will be healed in my body something's gonna happen in my life I have a word from God Peter, they're praying for him to get out of jail and he wipes his eyes and the, there's a light on and there's a being in the room and the angel says, hey, put your shoes on and put on your coat. We're leaving. And Peter's like, man, this can't be happening. There's no way in the world. Am I seeing an angel of God? No, that, that, surely that's not the channel God would choose to get me out, little old me. There's no way he would use an angel I mean, he would have Herod change his mind or someone break me out. But an angel coming into the jail cell, that doesn't make sense. There's no way God could come through for me like this. But if it's too good to be true, God's probably involved. Now, I know that contradicts what we believe. But if it's too good to be true and you're praying about it, God must be involved. If you think it's too good and you must be dreaming, it must be a God dream. Oh, Peter, you're not dreaming at all. What you thought is a vision is a real thing going down. You're about to come out of the situation that has had you locked up. I told them this morning, some of you have had the worst year in 2018. You can't wait to see it leave. But when you step in into 2019 you'll understand that God brought you out of everything you suffered this year and the Lord has something prepared for you and what you've endured will not be in vain it might be nighttime right now and you might be weeping but weeping endures for a night but joy is coming in the morning would somebody get on their feet and get ready for a season of joy to hit their family hit their emotions hit their mind somebody praise him with a joyful spirit rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice <laughs> nudge your neighbor and tell him you're not dreaming this is really going down Pete you're coming out then the Lord took me out. When, he, when, when, when I was on the floor the other day praying and fasting, when that verse jumped out of the, off the Bible, and all the Lord spoke to me was, you're not dreaming. And then he said, go to Genesis 41, verse 25. So I opened up my Bible. In Genesis chapter 41, verse 25. Put that up on the screen for me. Thank you. The, here's Pharaoh just had the dreams about the famine and the feasting. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. 
God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. You think it's just a dream, but it's not a dream. God is letting you know what's about to go down. Can I tell someone right now who's been praying for a loved one, and every time you pray, you see them at the altar with a vision. You see their eyes dripping tears. You see their hands raised. You see God delivering them. That's not your flesh. And that's certainly not the devil telling you that. The Lord is trying to show you what he is about to do. And you need to have some faith in those moments that when you see that, you don't just wipe your eyes. You start thanking God. He shut up. My loved one's coming back to church in 2019. My sister will pray through. My brother will pray through. My spouse will pray through. I see what God's about to do. I'm not dreaming. This, let me just put this in here because you have to now in today's terms, today's world. This is not a message for the crazy dreamer who's expecting God to give him $10 million and four Teslas tomorrow morning. It's the Lord. He spoke to me. No, you're consumed with greed. The Bible said you ask it, you miss it because you ask it for your lust. But I'm talking to prayer warriors. People that have, are not even prayer warriors, but people that have real needs in this room. Sincere situations. And you don't have faith that God's going to come through. I've come with a message from the Lord for you. God is going to give you a victory. God said God's going to give you a victory. But you've got to rejoice now before you see the wall fall. You've got to shout at Joshua. You think that's just the man you're talking to. That's the captain of the host right there. That wall's going to come down but you've got to shout when you hear the command I dare someone to realize you're not dreaming that God's going to give you a miracle God's going to give you a blessing God has something for you David said oh clap your hands all ye people and then put your mouth behind it and shout unto God with a voice of triumph someone let out a war cry in this room right now and lift up that voice hallelujah hallelujah I'm not dreaming God has something for me hallelujah Gideon's enemies were out hanging out, stealing the harvest, robbing the people of God. And one of those soldiers one night had this crazy dream of this big old barley cake rolling down into the camp and taking him out. He told his buddy about it. His buddy said, that's not a dream. That's going to go down. That's the sword of Gideon. That's, 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 that's God speaking for them. He's going to give them a victory over us. That's, that was, let me just say this right now. If you can believe that it's not a dream, that God's going to do it for you, you'll give hell a nightmare right there. What you call a dream, hell calls a nightmare. What you call a victory, hell calls a defeat. And so hell is dreaming that you don't get faith in the word of God. You don't believe the words for you. And you sit there spiritually paralyzed and don't receive it and don't grab it and don't maintain it and don't declare that it's yours. Because if that happens, it goes right by you, right out the door. But someone in this room has made up their mind I'm going to torment those demons I'm going to get a victory over everything attacking my family, attacking my babies, attacking my marriage attacking my home, I want to see God do what only God can do let the dream be reality let the dream come true let my destiny appear let my vision become known somebody shout I've got a victory coming, I've got a victory I've got a victory coming. First Kings chapter 3. Solomon's the new king. David's dead. And the Bible said God visited Solomon one night. And in his sleep, God said to him, ask me what you want me to give you. And Solomon starts telling God in his sleep about how he wants, he's just a kid. And how can he lead these people? He needs wisdom. And so God tells him, you're going to get wisdom. And you're going to have, you're going to be the most knowledgeable man of all time. And more wisdom than anybody. And you're going to have all this stuff. And you're going to live to an old age. And the richest man ever. And all these things happen. And you, Solomon wakes up. And you think Solomon would say, Man, that was a good dream. Have you ever had a dream that was too good and you woke up and it was not true? 
You're like, I just go straight into depression. Like, I thought that was real. That's why I see Solomon that next day. Like, whoa, what in the war? I'm going to have more than everybody. I'm going to be, that can't be true. Oh, but Solomon, it's no dream. The Lord visited you in the darkest night. He said, ask me what you want. Oh, my Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. That's, there's three dimensions right there. Asking is easy. It's just a word of the mouth. Seeking takes your eyes, but knocking takes your hands. You become dangerous to hell when you start asking God with your mouth and you start searching with your eyes and your spirit. Something's going to happen. You wake up every, every day saying a miracle is going to happen today. Something's going to happen this week. Something good's coming my family's way. And then you start knocking on the door of heaven and you start raising your hand. That's why I wouldn't pay any, for any seat where someone was not worshiping God when a miracle was floating by them because when you start to worship God with those hands what you're doing in the spirit is you're knocking on the door you're saying Lord here I am again I'm here on Sunday morning again I'm here for my miracle one more time you said ask and I'll receive you said seek and I'll find but I'm here to knock also because I'm expecting a door to open Let the doors open in 2019. Let the doors open that have never opened before in your life, in your ministry, in your family. Uh, Peter, James, John, come on, let's go climb this mountain. And they climb to the top of the mountain and Jesus is standing there before them. And then all of a sudden, they have to wipe their eyes because Moses is there. And Elijah is there. And then Jesus starts changing colors. And then the voice starts talking out of clouds. This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. You know, what in the world is going on here? And then they're coming down the mountain, and Jesus says, don't tell anybody about that. So after the resurrection... So did that happen or not? Because even you don't want us to know or speak about it, but you wanted us to know about it. You want us to see it, but we can't talk about it yet. But you want us to know it's there. You want us to know that if we'll separate ourselves and climb that mountain of transfiguration or transformation that something is there on the top of the mountain that we couldn't see down in the valley that there are things out there we didn't know about heavenly things out there we had no idea were there oh it's real I told them this morning I've always heard it preached Bishop that Moses was on the mountain when he said God show me your glory and the Lord said well there's a place by me in the rock and Moses hit hide in the cleft of the rock that's what we always preach like Moses was up there in the up in the cloud on the mountain Mountain, and he said, show me your glory and God said, stand right here that's not what happened at all he was down in the camp when he said show me your glory because the next chapter in the second verse God tells him if you want to see it you got to come up to the mountain and I'll meet you at the top of the mountain in other words the only thing standing between you and seeing the glory of God is a mountain climb Moses the mountains in your way let me tell someone right now who's been praying and been fasting and climbing that mountain and the enemy's telling you it's for no good you just keep climbing and you just keep praying and you just keep fasting because when you get to the top there's something coming that only one word can describe it the glory of God glory is going to come to you glory in your home the glory of God in your ministry the glory of God in your job Turn to your neighbor and tell him you're not dreaming. Acts 27, 21 to 25. Acts 27, Paul, they're on a storm. They haven't eaten in 14 days. They haven't seen the sun. After long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not loose from Crete to have gained this harm and this loss. Verse 22, 
the Bible said that, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life. You're all going to make it out of this. No man's life. But of the ship, verse 23, he said, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, verse 24, and saying, fear not, Paul, there must, you must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Everyone's going to make it. Verse 25, and Paul said this, wherefore, sirs, guys, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. We're in a storm. We haven't seen the sun in 14 days. We're fasting because we can't eat. And you're seeing angels. Right. Why didn't we see the angel? I love the carnal person. Why didn't I see him? Well, you haven't prayed in six months. Paul said, I saw an angel. I wasn't dreaming. And the angel said, not only am I coming out of this, we're all coming out of this. Oh, there's going to be a wreck, but we're going to survive. And we're going to make it through this storm. And you need to cheer up right now. Because what you think is me just daydreaming is a word from God. And they looked at him, what, what, do, you, what do you mean, Paul? Because what I saw was so heavenly and was so real. And the words were so direct that what you might not believe it but when this wreck is over and you grab a broken board and you swim to shore and you realize you should have died there but you're still alive now you're going to know it wasn't a dream it wasn't a vision and I'm not crazy God gave me a word for you and I want to tell this church right now corporately and individually you're going to come out of everything the devil's doing to you everything he's saying to you everything he's attacking you with whoever he's using it doesn't matter the Lord is on your side whom shall you fear the Lord is with you of whom shall you be afraid somebody praise the Lord that you're coming out of it somebody I feel the Holy Ghost right there somebody praise the Lord that you're coming out of it Turn to your neighbor and tell him I'm not dreaming. Luke 24, verse 23. They've just searched for the body of Jesus. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. Now they're looking for his body and they don't see it. But they do see angels. But they think the angels... This is just the vision. Because when you're searching for Jesus and he does not show up in the way you expect him to or the timing you expect him to, you can start to say this is all a dream. This is all crazy. We, we looked for him. We couldn't find him. But we, we had this vision where, he, where these angels told us he was alive. Oh, that was no vision. He's up, Mary. He's walking behind you. He's in the room right now. He's resurrected. Your hope wasn't in vain. I told them this morning when they entered that deck tomb, there's no doubt they thought they were at a dead end. But oh, I felt the Holy Ghost. When you think you're at a dead end, God has built a highway under your Red Sea, Moses. You have no idea where to turn. I can't fix it this way. I can't fix it that way. I can't fix it that way. And I can't fix it that way. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't think I'm just going to stand still. No, Moses. He said, tell the people to go forward. But it's a dead end, God. It might be a stop sign, but it's not a dead end. Just keep walking walking forward but there's water there just keep walking forward but the enemy's on my tail just keep walking forward what am I going to do I might drown I'm afraid just keep walking forward and when your foot hits the water and when you stretch forth that rod something's going to open up that you had no idea was there the entire time You're not at a dead end. God is about to show you that you weren't even dreaming. After all, 
he can make a way out of no way his thoughts are higher than your thoughts his ways are higher than your ways and when you don't know where to turn doesn't the Bible say trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths not path paths so when one path comes to an end another path starts when you are shut up when you are trusting in the Lord something is coming something is coming I wish you would just stand on your feet and worship him like he's God. Praise him like he's the king of kings. Stay standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Holy Ghost. standing joseph was 17 when he dreamed about everything bowing down he was 30 when he stepped up before pharaoh 13 years of hell 13 years of misery 13 years of being lied on accused sold seduced sentenced stripped everything ever imprisoned and put in a dungeon forsaken and forgotten and ignored and delayed And one day the king has a dream. You know what's funny? Is when they brought him out to interpret the dream, nowhere does it say, and by the way, when you're done interpreting it, you'll be a free man. For all Joseph knew, he was going to interpret a dream and go back to his dungeon. And that's what the enemy says. Oh, go ahead and get your moment with the king. But you come, back to, you come back to the house when you're done. You come back to the, to the stress and the chaos and the anxiety and the fighting and the arguing and the contention. Oh, you go ahead and get your altar call moment. You get in the, you get in the, in the presence of Jesus, but you make sure you come by Herod's house on the way home, wise men. Because whoever king's house you're in last is truly your king. So, here he is. And he interprets the dream and says, this is what the dream means. God's showing you what he's about to do. Now, he's had, a, he's had a dream for 13 years, Pastor Myers. 13 years a dream hasn't manifested. You can't tell me every voice in the world didn't come to him. And tell me he was, he was just dreaming. It wasn't God. If it was God, what in the world? Why are you going through all this? It just keeps getting worse. And he stands up and interprets someone else's dream. And the king says, he understands my dream. I've got to find someone to unite to my dream. And they choose Joseph. Watch this. His dreams have done nothing for him for 13 years. The second he unites himself to the king's dream. It immediately unlocks his dreams. Someone in here, you're so close. Oh, I'm going to say something. I hope I don't offend you. Someone in here, you are, you are so close to God blessing you the way you've been praying. But the only thing is you're just not faithful. You hear, you're here once a week. Oh, it's quiet, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm not rebuking you. I'm feeling what I'm saying. And the reason why the dream still has you locked up is because you've not united to his dreams yet. His dreams are you being faithful to every service. You being all the way in, in the kingdom. You being completely submitted to your pastor. You being all the way in with this church. And if you will unite to that, Oh, it's quiet, but I'm stirring it now. It will unlock what you've been feeling, what's been hovering but not falling in your life, what's been prophesied and promised but not come to fruition. The king wants to know 
Do you want your dreams unlocked? Then you must understand and unite yourself to His. That means whatever He asks me, I'm in. Whatever He wants from me, I'm in. Because I can't afford to live one more year in a spiritual dungeon waiting for my moment. Hoping the king calls my name. 2018 is about to end. The dreams that you've been given of God are real and they are true. He just wants to know, can you unite your life to his plan? If you go all the way in with him, Joseph, you only saw 13 things bowing down to you. It's so funny, the 11 stars, sun, the moon. So funny, it was a representation of years. He would wait for the dream to manifest. He didn't know that. But when when the 13 years ended, he he only saw 13 things bowing down to him in his dream 13 years ago. But when the dream came to reality, the Bible said all of Egypt bowed the knee because what was a dream that God gave you was only a portion of what God was actually going to do for you in other words here it all comes to this you're not dreaming and the dream you had is bigger than what you dreamed oh I'm speaking to somebody's spirit right now I'm right in your home. I'm in your car on Thursday morning when you were praying. I can feel the Holy Ghost right now. Your dream is real. How desperate are you to see it manifest? I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I didn't plan. This didn't go the same way this morning, but now I feel it. I feel an altar call of commitment right now. An altar call of commitment. Who will commit themselves to the kingdom of God? Who will commit themselves to the will of God for their life? To the way of God? To the purpose of God? Who will commit themselves to this church? To your pastor? If you will commit, would you step out of your pew right now and walk down toward your dream? Because your dream is waiting in the altar for you. Will you watch or will you walk? Will you watch or will you walk? You're not dreaming. You're not dreaming. You're not dreaming. It's going to happen. I said God's going to make a way. God's going to come through. God has showed you what he is about to do. And I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. It's not a vision. It's not an angel. It's not a dream. It's the Lord moving. Somebody make a commitment right now. Somebody pray a big prayer right now. Somebody say, I'm all yours, Lord. Somebody be willing to serve this church in any any way or capacity. Somebody be telling God right now, I'll serve anywhere you want me. I'll serve any way you want me. I'll serve any time you want me. Anyhow, I don't care, Lord, with anyone you want me to. I'm willing, Lord. Somebody show the king I'm in. Just get me out of my dungeon. I'm in. a king right now I hope you realize that some of you in the pew need to approach him he's a king he's a king he's the king his eyes are in this room right now somebody give him worship somebody give him high praise somebody give him high commitment I'm all yours Lord faithful committed That's it. Get all in with your pastor. Get all in with this church. 
Get all in with the kingdom. I see tears. I see tears dropping out of eyes. I see people with hands raised. Those who are serious are stepping toward their dream. Oh, God's going to blindside some of you with favor you never knew existed. There's stuff coming you had no idea. Oh, look at the seriousness of this. Look at the tears dropping. Someone's ready. Someone's sick of the dungeon. Someone's sick of Potiphar's house. Someone's sick of it. I'm sick of being a slave to the world. A slave to the enemy. Come on, God. Somebody's dreams are breathing again. Somebody's dreams are breathing again. There's some CPR going on in the spirit right now. There's some spiritual CPR going on right now to somebody's dream, somebody's ministry, somebody's anointing. God's not through with you. God's not done with you. The Lord has a plan. Now unto Him. That is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. He makes dreams come true. He makes light in the darkness, my God. It's dark out, preacher. Might as well dream. It's dark out. Might as well start dreaming. Come on, dream in the darkness. Dream in the darkness. For the great and effectual door approacheth you. A great and effectual door is approaching you. The adversaries have already been there. They've already circled you. That's why you feel the pressure. But the doorway is coming. I said the door is coming. The door is coming. Fire God! Set him on fire! Set him on fire! Set him on fire! Let it be a dangerous threat to hell! Set him on fire! Set him on fire! Set him on fire! Set them on fire! Set them on fire! He on a marekata! He on a marekasata! He on a marekata la masataya! Come on, dreams are gonna come true. Prayers are gonna be answered. Kids are going to come back to God. Grandkids are going to pray through. Mom and dad might be somewhere else right now. Angels are on their trail. Angels are on their trail. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Set me on fire, Lord. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. looking around me I'm looking above me I lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help 
by help coming from the Lord. Someone lift up your eyes. Don't look around you. Look up for the Lord. He's coming. He's working behind the scene. He's got something planned. Come out from the curtain, Lord. Come out from behind the curtain, Lord. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Oh, for the Holy Ghost up here today. There's fresh anointing. Never stop. Oh, you grab your neighbor's hand right now they're gonna sing it again you're holding the hand of a dreamer dreams that have been attacked dashed gashed dreams that have been delayed denied even destroyed and there's a heartbeat we just found the pulse, the word of God just found the pulse in that dream. Grab that hand with faith right now. Squeeze it with faith. And start to declare, you're not dreaming. You're not dreaming. God's going to come through. They're going to sing it again, but let's pray in faith for someone. God's going to come through for you. Pray for them like you want them to pray for you. Even when I don't feel it, you Every dream no one knows about. Oh, shut up. Let it go, Holy Ghost. Let it go, Holy Ghost. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. 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 Oh, you Somebody, somebody keep praying in the spirit. We're doing something right now. We're doing something right now. We're taking territory. Somebody's waking up. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I'm 
Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Someone get off the ground. Somebody get up. The light's shining. It's time, Peter. You're coming out of this. You're coming out of this. You're coming out of this. You're